from this computer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining in for another Bible study here with uh, Minister Marquise L. Kimball and our great brother, Bill Omato. And we're going to get into our New Testament studies that we do on Thursday. Uh, let us open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to dive into your word. We ask for your clear revelation. We ask for your understanding. Lord God, we ask that you lead us down directions of knowledge, Father, uh, and that we have peace with what we understand, Lord God. And not only will we gather the information, but we'll share it, Lord God. We'll let others know about it. And it's all to glorify you. We thank you for being with us in the study. We ask that your Holy Spirit impresses upon our spiritual word. Uh, press our heart, God. Let us hide the word in our heart. We thank you for it in the powerful name of Yeshua. Amen. So um, we're going to get into the study today. As I said, it's Tuesday. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I am in uh, using... Uh, the U version Bible app, uh, which is the most commonly used app that we like, you can get it at mybible.com or download it from your Play Store. If you notice, I am using the King James Apocrypha version, KJVAAE. It is the closest thing to my Sefer, which I generally use. Now, uh, you can read along with us. And did we read the parable of the sower? No, we did not read the parable of the sower. Um, here it is. Yeah, we're gonna stop right here. I believe we did. We read the parable of the sower, or did we read the 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 the, the, sower, the, sower, the seed fell on the stony and hard rock? Different. Yeah. Yep, different. We read that, but this is different. Right different. Here. Okay. Yep. All right then. Cool. cool. Yep. Good. Good. All right. And it says here, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered to unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat and whole multitude stood on the seashore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed some seeds, oh, we did read this. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. So I am so sorry. Let's get over to 14. Let's get over to 14. I'm sorry. All right. So 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. All right. At the time, the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, this is John the Baptist. He is risen for the dead and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him for Herod laid hold on John and bound him <laughs> and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, is it not lawful for thee to have her? And he went he, when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet, speaking of John the Baptist. But when his Rod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So I wonder what type of dancing that was, right? Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatever she would ask for. She must have been twerking. And yes, and she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's the head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be given to her. And he sent and beheaded John in prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him out on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. So wasn't in the church. Once again, he was out on the outbounds. He was trying to get away. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, 
we have here, but five loaves and two fishes. And so that's almost like when we run into people, uh, we don't got to send them to no church. We ain't got to send them out to the wolves. You give them food to eat. You feed them. That's why we stand up in our own household and be the priest of our own household. We feed them. He said, bring them hither. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitudes. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. So this is a, to me, symbolic of not only just eating in the natural, but eating in the spiritual, um, because we do have to eat. We have to feed ourselves regularly. Sure, sure. And they had a were eating and about 5,000 men besides women and children. And so what this means is that there's enough of the word of the Lord to go around, mm -hmm. eat, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking onto the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come unto thee unto water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they sat where in the ship came and worshipped him of saying, of truth, thou art the son of God. And when they were gone out, they came into the land of Genesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round brought and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment as many as were made whole, perfectly whole. Uh, one of you just want to pick up in 15. All right. Okay. Then came to Yahusha scribes and Philistine first. Fer, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of Elohim by your tradition? For Elohim commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. So stop. Right I was there. getting ready to. Okay, let's talk about this. Okay. Let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about this. We, let's we talk have to about talk, this. We have to talk about this. So now, now what? Can you tell me? <clears throat> I don't know. I still don't understand what that means. Okay, let's talk about it. So let's go back up to where this really starts, right? Mm -hmm. So um, things that defile, that's the topic mine says over here. But it says the scribes and Pharisees. So you know how they were. They was always trying to find reasons to go against Jesus and his disciples. And they were law keepers. Law keepers. And keepers of the law just means they knew the law. They knew the law. Inside and out. They were raggedy and they felt like they could sin and then be forgiven once a year. Pretty much. By their atonement of, of sacrifice. Pretty much, yeah. They were under, they were, they were sticking to the Mosaic law. Okay. So let's just put it in perspective. They were tied to the Mosaic law. The way, way Moses gave it off the mountain, that's what they preached and that's what they were supposed to live. Preaching and living is two different things, but that's what they preached. They knew it inside and out. 
Now, whether they lived there or not, I'm sure some did, some didn't, you know, but these guys here, they supposedly knew what Moses had wanted. Mm -hmm. And up until that point, everybody was still operating under the Jew Judaism, under the Hebrew that was followers. That's why they, that's so, so that's why they say he, well, he was, he was blasphemy. That's why they called him blasphemy because he came against that. Yep. Part Saying of it. You don't got a part of that. You don't got to do all of that. Part of that part. Yeah. yeah part of, part of those reasons. But here you see like they, they, they charge Jesus disciples because they didn't wash their hands. Right. And then, but that was part of the law, mm -hmm. part of the law. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said, he didn't even forget what the law says essentially, but he answered in them. Why do you also transgress the commandment of your tradition? For God commanded, say, honor thy mother and father. He that curses his mother or father, let him die to death. Let him die the death. Yeah, oh, wait, I'm going to, okay, wait a minute. Ah, let me go back. Okay, okay, can I finish? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it makes sense to me because Yahusha is taking you back to the commandment that says, honor your father and your mother that your days might be prolonged on this earth which is the first commandment without promise. Well, well, he's well he said he that curses father or mother let him die death. Right, but they, look at how they they, they kill nobody. But look at how they mirror though. No, I get that, but we were talking about this specific scripture. No, right? I know. But so understanding this is that he's saying you're saying something to me because my guys didn't wash their hands before they ate. But you're not killing anybody when they dishonor their mother or father. And it's all part of the law. So if you want to bring out the fact that I'm not washing my hands, my disciples ain't washing their hands before they eat, then how come you ain't killing anybody? Because it says he that curses father or mother, let him die. Yeah, but that's what I'm getting at. Where, 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 where does this come back? This come down to, uh, he said, he quoted on your father and mother, colon. And he yeah. that curses. So Exodus 20, 20, Deuteronomy 5, 16, Exodus 21, 17, and Leviticus 2019 are the plugs for that particular script. Which I get. So I already you know. Which way. I mean, I don't have to. I mean, I already okay. know he's going back to the honor of your father. I know and your mother, and I know where he goes with those scriptures. I, I get mm -hmm. that part. Mm -hmm. I'm just understanding what do you mean, let him die to death. So what is he what is he saying here? That is I, I don't it, care that, about that, what that, was that, said in the old testament. He's that, saying if you curse your father or your mother, you're gonna die to death. So what does that mean? In today, in today's terms, what does that mean? You don't get the right to curse your father or your mother, regardless of what your father or your mother did or didn't do in Correct. your life. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, in 1,000. Or you will die the death is what I'm getting out of that scripture. Yeah. Yeah. You, we know that your, your time is shortened. If you curse your mother and father, it is the promise without uh, the, it is the commandment without promise. Comment, yes, yes, exactly. So, yes, so those are the plugs to that specific scripture. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. But you say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever you might be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, shall he, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of Elohim of no effect by your tradition. You hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah, prophe uh, Isaiah prophesy of you saying, Th this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men. What? Wait a minute. Can you can, can somebody elaborate that? What does that mean here? What is what he says? But in vain they do worship me, teachings for teaching for the the commandments of men. What are the commandments of men? So man's laws instead of God's laws. Yeah. So they are basically appealing to men and not appealing to uh, the Most High, and so their worship is in vain. You okay. know, yeah, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Okay. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, 
but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So he was shutting down what you can eat. Mm -hmm. That's the, you can eat pork. Pork doesn't defile you. It's what comes out of you. Yeah. That's what he's saying. So once again, once again, that's beautiful. He's sitting here simply just that's beautiful. This traditional crap. That's beautiful. I never used that for that. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Wow. That's, that's absolutely that, that, that right there stops it all. Mm -hmm. Let me eat my tilapia. <laughs> Don't know. Stop it now. <laughs> then came his Thalmodium. Mm -hmm. which is disciples, and said unto him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Now, he, why were they offended? Because he's bucking their tradition. Right. But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. There's your wheat and your weed. <laughs> Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Ouch. Oh. And if the blind lead, the blind both shall fall into the ditch. So there's no excuse for following someone who is clearly blind. Yeah, you're on your way into the ditch too. Yeah. Then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Yahushua said, are you also yet without understanding? Do not yet ye understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drop. You poop it out. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Watch what you say. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defiles not a man. He get just out, cut him down. Get out of here. With he this. cut him down. Get out of here. Don't oh, worry. he cut him down. I see why they put him on the cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. see why they was mad at him. Yeah, they was trying to get him up out of there. He was bucking everything. Woo-wee, <laughs> because when you know the Mosaic law now, it, you understand it different. Correct. <laughs> okay. Then Yahushua went thence and departed into the coast of Zion and... Uh, Tyre, where, Tyre and Zidon. Tyre and Zidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, I'm still trying to learn the Sephir song. Sorry, mm -hmm. you guys. No, you good. Came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Adonai, son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Mm -hmm. So she had a mind issue. It could have been Men a me mental, mental. Mental illness. We have to deal with this for a second because churches put that under the rug. Yeah, that's mental health. That is mental health when you're dealing with a devil that this woman was dealing with here. Right. Schizophrenia. Uh, what's another one they say today? Bipolar, bipolar, multiple personality, multiple, of all of that. Manic, uh, uh, manic depressant, yes, um, autism, autism, all of that. Autism. Even uh, the, what's the one that they forget things? I am si Alzheimer's. 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 Anything with your mind. But he answered her, not a word. Why didn't he answer? <laughs> Why didn't he answer? Because look who she was. Canaan. There you go. Canaan. He answered not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cried. So he didn't even answer her, and his disciples said, send her away. <laughs> but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why did I have to be the one to read that today? Yes, sir. Then came she and worshipped him and said, Adonai, help me. But he answered and said, oh, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Adonai, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the Lord's table, their Lord's table. Then Yahushua answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your faith, be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Mm -hmm. so, so, the, so the only reason that she was made whole was because of her faith 
That's the only reason he even paid attention to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't coming to deal with them. He was there for the Hebrew at that point. And so Canaanites, he wasn't there for them. You yep. know, the lost the sheep of Israel, he was mm -hmm. coming for them at that point. But still, miraculously, I think that just gives you a glimpse of how good our Messiah is because he still healed the Canaanite woman's daughter, yep. which he wasn't even sent for her. But then that kind of gives you a foresight of the acceptance of everybody that has faith in him yep. can be entered. They can be entered no matter what, what it is. But we still like, I like the fact that we have to now acknowledge that not only did he ignore her but his disciples said send her away send her away yeah. because realistically he only at that time came at that time mm -hmm. but when he went to the cross that's he, that's everybody. So yeah, he went to the cross so all, but oh, so but when he comes but at that, that time, yeah, when he showed up that time, he was there to gather the lost, lost sheep. Of Israel, and they still didn't listen to him. Huh? And they still didn't listen to him. They still put his own people, put him on the cross, or put him on the on the tree. Yeah, they didn't really believe most of them that he was the Messiah. He was just another man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Yahushua departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Yahushua's feet, and he healed them. So much so that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole the lame to walk, and the blind to see. So what's being whole being made? What does that mean? Being so whole would not make it not lacking anything. Okay. Yeah, when you got a whole pie, it's the whole piece. It's the whole, you're whole, you're complete. And so what Jesus does, or the salvation, the Yeshua, the Messiah, um, he makes you whole. So it's not always one area, it's wherever you're missing lot. And he feels the lack to make you whole. But why is maimed to be whole in there with negative things? So like, think about so, it. It's like dumb to speak. Look, they're all going from bad to good. Maimed is bad. Whole is good. Every one of them is from bad to good. Dumb okay. is dumb. You can't talk. Speak is the opposite of dumb. Right. But what does the word whole mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, what, 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 what would it, what, what, I guess, what? If you were broken down physically. Physically. Physically or mentally. mentally. Physically or mentally. Okay. okay. Whatever you lack okay. on the physical or mental side. Got it. Got it. Cool. And the blind to see and they glorified the Elohim of Israel. Mm -hmm. Of Israel. Israel. <laughs> yeah. Then Yahushua called his Talmudim unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Mm -hmm. And his Talmudim said unto him, whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Yahushua said unto them, how many loaves have ye? And they said, seven and a few little fish. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish and he gave thanks and he broke them and gave to his Talmudim and his, the Talmudim to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up, up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. Wow. So he fed all those people and still had seven baskets left. It, it's an illustration of what he does for us mm -hmm. yeah. on a day to day basis. Yeah. We don't look at it like that. We just look at it as he did something that is was expected of us, but we don't really realize that he took little to nothing and fed everybody and still has some left over. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and they did all eat, were filled, and they took up the broken meat to the left seven masses full, and they and they that did eat were four thousand men. Not counting besides women and children, not counting the women and children. So, how many you think it was? Probably twenty thousand people. You know, they had multiple wives, right. multiple children. Probably fed twenty thousand. Right. 
you know, family, that's really family, the truth. I mean, family, family, yeah, family. A lot, a lot the, the, the church glorifies 5,000. Yeah. I've heard 5,000 my whole life. But the truth of the matter is, he fed 50, 60, 70,000 people, mm-hmm. not yeah. including the wife and kids. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of men. That is. And he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Madiah. Is that McDonald? That's it. Yeah. Bill, you want to go? Sure. I'm reading from this, what you have on the screen, right? Sure. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Uh, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, "When when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. Stop. So you know what that's saying, right? They yep. got astrology, astronomy, you read in atmospheric pressures and whatever knowledge you think you have about how the world works. But mm-hmm. can you discern the times, mm-hmm. the signs of the times? Mm-hmm. Can you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which, when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not understand yet? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets he took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets he took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, then understand, then understood how they, when that moves, it throws my eyes off. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> then he understood how that he may not beware of the leaven, bre- leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Okay, so I'm going to get you a full screen right here, okay. and then I'll move at the bottom. <laughs> when Jesus came into the coast of Caesar uh, Philippi, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he and he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, that thou reveal it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Stop. 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 Now, some people may disagree with me, but this is some flowers part that um, <laughs> I can't uh, why, yeah I can't wait to hear. <laughs> so with, 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 with the with the with the what some believers say when they read this is that Peter is who started the church. <laughs> this is that Peter is the the rock <laughs> that the church is built on. So Saint Peter, um, but that is not what that is saying. Um, he's not calling Peter the rock. Um, Peter is the word Peter, I believe is rock, something along those lines, but upon this rock, I will build my church, but Jesus is the rock. And you know why he's the rock? Cause he's the cornerstone. And so and you know where to get that. Huh? You know where to get that. Because Peter was the actual first bishop. Yeah, but that's yeah. crap. That's not yet. That's, right. I'm not talking about He's building the church on Peter. Right. Peter's nothing. Right. I mean, I'm not nothing. I'm sorry, but <laughs> he's, not, he's not. It's no one greater than John the Baptist. They would have built it on John the Baptist, who was Peter, or they would have built it on Saul turned Paul. But nah, the church is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ alone. 
I believe it says that. Is that scripture? Yeah, yeah there's that scripture? scripture somewhere. Yeah, you know, so yeah, it's built the foundation. He's the, he's the cornerstone. Cornerstone, the foundation is Jesus Christ, the law and the prophets, but it's not Peter. He's not the rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay, cool. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, 18 is where I'm at. You are, let me say, you. I stopped you in the, yep, 18 <laughs> is where I stopped you. <laughs> okay. And uh, I can't see because the picture, I don't know what the first word there in 18 is. The first word in 18? Let me yeah, okay. See. And also I say unto thee <laughs> that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, yes, yes. Right there. <laughs> <Wow>. Here it comes. <laughs> this is not far from me. I want to know. Mm -hmm. He's first of all, he's not talking to everybody here. Mm -hmm. So everybody doesn't get the right to bind and loose anything. That's right. It might be Worshiping the queen of the coast, binding things, thinking that you're worshiping Yahusha because he was not talking to everybody here, first mm -hmm. and foremost, right? He said, blessed Simon, right? And for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto you, my father in heaven. So then that that is loosely, that's a term that's loosely said at church. That's the problem. And when you're living in sin, if you're not living and following in the lifestyle of him, you don't get the right to bind anything or loose anything. No, you you won't be able to. Yeah, you won't, be able right. to. You won't you even have, have the power, power to. Yeah, you won't have the authorization. You won't have, what about darkness? What about them pulling from darkness? People think that that when they are blessed, that 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 regardless of how they're blessed, they think that it comes from Yahuwah when it could clearly come from Satan. Yeah, it can come from it can come from darkness. Yeah, you can get blessed by the devil. You know, right. they can give you something you think is a blessing, um, right. but. Um, so that's the danger in it to me. Yeah, but I don't think that them, uh, you know, when those things happen, and I think that we're really just tricking ourselves to call it a blessing. But the Most High never said, "I'm giving you to this," or you didn't ask the Most High specifically for this, and He ordained it. Maybe you went out and got it on your own, you know, or any other number of things. And like, you know, Lord bless me, you know. Um, I, th I thought about it, like, you know. People pop up on Facebook with new cars and like, Lord, bless me with this. You got a thousand dollar payment when it when they repo it. Was it a blessing? <laughs> you know, so did you get blessed with that or did the enemy trick you into doing something dumb with your finances when you should have bought something you can afford? And so I think you can look at a lot of different things on two different angles, but you can harness power from God. You can harness power from darkness, too. Yes, you can. I got that. Yeah. And then so what what does that mean? The gates of hell. What is that? What is the gates of hell? Huh? There's literally the hell's a demon. So there's literally gates in the earth, portals that take you down to do the hell. There's I openings. One thousand percent. And then so agree with that. And it's the demons that take you there. Correct. Now these gates of hell. What is hell's? So, and you're and you're very well studied on this part. What did Jesus do when he died? He went to where? He went to hell. And the gates of hell did not prevail. Yeah. That's because right. the gates were supposed to be locked. Yeah. That nobody was once you that yeah. was your con that was your fight. Yeah. That what you got there, that's yeah. it. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And then so there's they gates like, to who, keep you in there. Yeah. They, were like, they will not prevent this guy. Where'd he come from? <laughs> How'd he get here? Yeah, he fought against the demons of hell. Correct. Yep. And so those are the gates that normally would keep you locked and nobody comes up out of there. But they you will not prevail. Gates. You broke them. And then it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And so there are literally keys, not physical keys, to be able to unlock the things from the heavenlies. And then that power means that if you really, anything that manifests on earth, it happens up there first. And so for you to be able to uh, bind on earth, that's a power that comes from heaven. 
And then if you loose on earth, that's a power that comes from heaven. And then he said, he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. So he did have an opportunity to maybe talk to all of them in but, this discourse here. But we would agree, or could we agree that everybody's buying this stuff and loses this stuff today? <laughs> what are they buying? Nothing's even happening. <laughs> what are they buying? But people are still getting blessed. I mean, what is considered a blessing? Somebody could get blessed today with a uh, a, a car and they think that they were blessed and we know it's not a blessing. I know when you look at these things, Jesus didn't feel those needs. Like mm -hmm. he, I, I don't see him. I not mean, he found time. that he found that quarter Nothing. in the fish's mouth to pay taxes, mm -hmm. but his job was to help your physical and your mental mm -hmm. because God's going to provide your needs. Mm -hmm. And then, so when you are re rehabilitated in some way in mind or body, you need a healer, but God going to make sure you eat, <laughs> you know, He's going to make sure you eat some way or another. He's going to make sure your needs are fulfilled. However, these ailments, these demons, you need healed. You need a healer. Sure. And let's say every week you get together 100 people, same people every week. Out of those 100 people, every week somebody's bound to have a good story. It's just the luck of the draw. It's just, that's just how shit works. And so it's not like, you know, we're going to bless this person over here this week. And, you know, it's either as a whole or, you know, it's just kind of statistics you're looking at. And I think that's what that shit is most of the time. You're losing nothing. <laughs> For real. Losing your mind. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. All right. Where are we at? 21, Bill. It was you reading. I'm sorry. I know I can't do that. I don't have the power to lose something. <laughs> Maybe one day I will. Maybe I won't. You got the keys, Bill. Yeah, those will do, do fine. <laughs> You're not the champ. Okay, so from that time forth, <laughs> began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, that this should not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Yeah, so what does that say? Is Peter Satan? No. No. But P Satan was pulling on Peter because those words that he was speaking to the uh to jesus they were not words from the most high they were words uh worldly words and so satan is behind that i got you i got you then said jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it stop 24 go back mm -hmm. then jesus said unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself what does that mean what does that mean man it's a we are denying your lust you are denying who you used to be you can't be a follower of him and continue to live the same life that you used to live mm -hmm. you have to deny your flesh you gotta deny your flesh you, you have gotta to deny my appetite of lust, my appetite of things that I know is something that is in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Because even James says, when a man is tempted, it's when he's drawn away from his own lust and enticement. So it's your flesh that you have to deny. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's what that means. That's good. What you say, Bill? That sounds pretty much uh, it to me. I mean, just all the desires that you know that, you know, um, are against, you know, against the will of God, those things that um, take us deeper into the uh, pleasures that the world gives us. Those are the things that distract us from that relationship that we need to have with him. And denying that is what keeps us closer to him. So, I don't know, it's a good time to pray in situations like that or you know, reach out, talk to him. Cool. So, now this is what does this mean? Um, take up his cross. So, we're talking about a cross. We ain't talking about a tree. Right. But what is he talking about here? 
Well, the cross tree. We're talking about something that represented death and burden. Because that he carried whatever this represents, if it was a tree or whatever, cross, whatever. It was meant. It was death. It was representing death that he was carrying on his shoulder. He was going to the place to die on. So it represents sin. The cross represents sin. It represents sin. You got to put that sin to death. Okay. What'd you say, Bill? I say it represents to the death that, you know, that you 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 take this up. This is for life. You take this to the end, and I think that that's what that means. Yeah. All right. Because if it's that, think about it. That it makes sense that he went there because he already went for my sins. He took it and went and put it on that cross for me. So you don't have the right to judge me. Because he put my punishment of death on his back and went up there and died for me. So why we got to take him across it if he did it? Because you still got to deny yourself. No, that's different. You, you get, get, get your commas out. There's let him deny himself, comma, and take up his cross. So take up his cross is different than denying himself. So that's what I'm trying to nail down, what is take up his cross. I, I get the deny. I'm with you both on the deny. But I can't say that I can take the normal church flowers <laughs> for taking up the cross. <laughs> well, where, where, where are you staying at? So, so think so. The well, lifestyle, even associated with you know that with being like him, you know that's the and and to the end, okay. you do this. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. So, so I think it is, and I said I think said a thing leading what i said I did, okay <laughs> all right um and so i just i feel like it's just playing the cards that you have dealt in life because when jesus had to take up the cross which he hadn't took up the cross yet so he's speaking prophetically they like they don't even know what this guy's talking about see he ain't been on no cross yet so what does he mean when he's telling them take up the cross because he ain't been on the cross yet so they don't even cross what cross don't even mean anything to these people right now in regards to the most, and to, in regards to Yeshua. And then so take up the cross means deny yourself to me. And then taking up the cross means whatever you have to deal with in life because of this walk, you just take your cross. You, you deal with that. Like if you are uh, ostracized, you are beat on, you are spit on, you are led to death because of it. You just take your cross but you deny yourself and you follow him. And whatever comes along with following him, that is you carrying your cross. That's the way I think of it. And it could be flower, no, you mean, know? It could be complete flower. I mean, it makes sense. You know? Yeah, how do you do? I mean, you take care of what you got coming. He knew what he had coming. Yep. Regardless of if he was the king or not, he knew what he had coming. Yeah. With being in, with being who even, he was. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even that even makes your point even that much more valid because the fact that they didn't know Mm -hmm. anything about the cross he knew about the cross he knew he was going to the cross mm -hmm. so it makes the point that much better and i can agree with that actually okay it makes more sense than what they say in church yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I've heard, I've heard some of everything you know i've heard some of everything but like i said that's my thought you know Me too. that's just my thought Me you know? too. Okay. I've heard so <laughs> but i think that that's the most valid thing that you can say yeah. because you look at the that the fact that he had a cross to bear and he knew it the whole moment he was here yep he never got out of his mind he knew exactly what he was coming for they didn't know what he knew he was saying take it up deal with it just deal with it Deal with whatever it. it takes to follow me just like you know get your selfish desires out of the way because they had just talked about, you know, um, what it was to said before that. Uh, uh, yeah, if any man come after me. So, you know, if you call yourself a follower of the most high, mm -hmm. first and foremost, deny yourself. You know, get your selfish desires in check and then take everything that comes along with it and follow me. Let's go. You know, I like that. I mean, I had to agree with that. All right. 25, Bill. All right. For whosoever will save his life 
shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So don't try to worry about you. Material. Yeah, you taking care of you, you doing this, and all the things of the world, because that's your life. But if you really just lay down your life for him, you'll find him, and it'll be for your sake. 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mm -hmm. and, what, go ahead. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So think about this soul. What are they talking about? They're not talking about your life right here. They're talking about your soul, your mind, your willpower, and your emotions. But, uh, so you get rich and lose your mind. Mm -hmm. Think about committing suicide. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So what does it profit you to gain, amass all this worldly stuff, but you go hang yourself? What does it profit you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also, what does it profit you to gain all of that? And you wake up in hell. Correct. Correct. Because he said lose his soul. Correct. So that means if you lost your soul, you're going to wake up with the demons you dealt with in life in hell. Yes. Yes. So what does it profit? There ain't no profit in that. No. There ain't no profit in that. Yes, yeah. sir. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Yes. And then he shall reward every man according to his work. Reward ceremony or judgment. Yep. Yep. Every man according to his works. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't getting the right world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and lack thereof. Yeah. yeah. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That's what man like who got an opportunity that was standing there that won't die till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Who is that? It said, verily, I say to you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death. So they ain't going to die. So that makes me think. Well, that, we huh? we huh? John, is, there's no, we, we, can't, we, can't, we, can't, we can't get, we can't get past Enoch. He's not dead yet. Yeah, yeah, but, Elijah, but, Elijah, but, Elijah, but Elijah, he said, I don't know if they were standing there in that crowd right there. Yeah. You know, or however many people that were standing there. I have no he idea. Said there'll be some standing here. There's there be. There be. So there is. Right. There's there's some. Some so there's some here. more somewhere else. Okay. See? Some standing here. Okay. Yep. <laughs> there's some standing here. There's some of them. Yeah. But there's there's, there's more other places. Yeah. Enoch. Elijah, yeah. John. Of course, of course. Yeah, that's good. Who are you thinking of when... Um... I don't know. I don't even have a crack at that. I don't even I don't even have a crack at that. But that they're going to die, so they're not living forever. Right, sure. So that much we know they're going to die. Die now, rather than... John could have been standing there. Huh? It could have... I mean, it could have been Elijah and Enoch maybe in the mist dressed up standing there. Could have been Machizeldeck whatever happened to him did we ever find out like they ain't killing no. they just I don't know what happened. here today and gone yeah, I don't we know gotta find out where he went yeah where'd he go I don't know what happened. so he probably didn't taste death you know some chisel deck you got Enoch standing around you got Elijah do you we, know do we know like John do we know John there's no evidence John, of John. John the Baptist got his head. Yeah, he has that John, but not John the, 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 the author gospel, of the gospel. Oh, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't yeah. know. Maybe maybe he was one of the ones that didn't taste death because you don't know how he died. Yeah. 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 So they, they said, the evidence of him is he was sent to the island of Patmos because they couldn't kill him. Mm -hmm. They tried to kill him That's several right. times. They tried to put him in. They tried to, right? they tried to deep fry him, and he didn't die. Yeah. And they sent him out to the island of Patmos as a way of punishment to in hopes that he would die out there by poison snakes. Yeah. But he wrote the book of Revelation, so he did not die. Where's the revelation of him dying? There's no evidence of it. So I'm thinking that when he says there'd be some standing here, who was standing there at that time? Well, his he, followers, John. John was one of his followers. He was talking unto his disciples. Yeah, he so was John, talking. John was there. And then you got Enoch and Elijah in the past that haven't died yet. Yeah, yeah and this is who he's talking to. He's talking, he's to, talking to his disciples. Talking to his disciples. So John's standing there. John's mm -hmm. standing there. 
Yeah, and he said some there'd be some standing. So so there's more. Could be. That's dope. All right. Well, folks, we're going to stop to share here. It's been an hour online, though. We appreciate you listening. And if you like this format, please say something because we'd like to do it like this again. All right. God bless you. Peace. And you have a powerful day.